If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey everybody, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard, and today we got some bluish flame, I mean blue flare for a Digimon trading card game. Um, picked this deck up for obvious reasons, the aesthetic, um, and I wanted to show you guys my uh, current blue flare deck before we get the EX4 cards, which, by the way, look phenomenal. I'm so excited for that. So just going to quickly go over this deck profile and then kind of go over uh, how the deck plays and why it's a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Starting off with our our babies, our Digitama, our Digi eggs. Um, so Upamons are expensive. Let's just get that out of the way real quick. So this is Babitomon, which is a good budget variant. So what Babitomon does is if your opponent has two or more Digimon in play, you can draw a card. So that way, the, there's a lot of cards in this deck that kind of revolve around the two or more cards on your opponent's board. So this kind of just fits with the whole theme. Uh, it also came in the same set as it, so uh, that's not surprising. So we're just uh, sticking with the four Babitomon for uh, the budget, but there are other blue Digi eggs that you can work with as a substitute. There's another one that's coming up in uh, the next set um, for the uh, Galgamon stuff. So there's that as well. So there's different eggs you can work with, but for now I'm working with my little Babito Mon. All right, now we're going into our rookies, our level threes, starting off with our four Gaussmons. Gaussmon is a blue flare, and he's basically what helps you get your blue flares on the board. So what he does, is when he's deleted, you can play one level four Digimon with blue flare and its traits from your hand suspended without playing the call cost. So pretty much every level four blue flare in the deck has an on play effect. So basically you're able to get a free on play effect thanks to Gaussmon just kind of, you know, taking the taking the heat for that, for that swing. So definitely want to run four of that. Next up for our rookies, I'm only running three. Mendoki Betamon. Uh, this deck is very level four focused and kind of like how I said earlier where you they have a lot of on play effects. You're playing your level fours as opposed to digivolving into them. So we're running fewer rookies. So Mendoki Betamon, all your, uh, well, your opponent can't gain memory except uh, through tamer effects. So the tamers that reset memory, tamers that gain additional memory uh, based on certain requirements at the start of the turn. Those still proc, but Digimon that gain memory through card effects, they do not activate. So this is just a good, um, you know, rookie to have on the board just to kind of control your opponent's memory. And then that way, uh, you know, working with that. And also, like I said, you're not really Digivolving into most stuff. You're kind of just Digivolving your egg, promoting your rookie up, and it kind of just sits on the board regardless. So Madoki Betamon works for that as well. Lastly, for my rookies, I'm running three Jellymon. Uh, Jellymon is during your turn when you play a blue tamer, you can draw a card. It does have an inherited, which is uh, when an effect adds cards to your hand, you return one of your opponent's level three Digimon to the owner's hand. However, we don't really Digivolve in this deck to begin with, so you're never really going to get the inherited effect off, but we do run a decent amount of tamers, so Jellymon does come in handy. Um, I was running um, Sayukamon, um, but Sayukamon doesn't really stop the cost for Digicross. It only stops for reducing the cost for Digivolutions, um, and that's not really that helpful in my personal experience. So I decided I went with the Jellymon instead just for the extra draw. Um, if you have the Jamming Vmons, definitely run those. The, but the Jamming Vmons are a great rookie overall just in blue decks uh but for now i'm just rolling with the jelly mons all right now we're moving on to the bread and butter of the deck which is our level fours starting off with graymon iconic digimon right here so we got a blue graymon its first effect is on play reveal the top four cards of your deck add two cards of blue flare and the traits from among them to your hand you put the rest in the bottom of your deck if you have Kira in play, you may return one Metal Greymon from your trash to your hand instead. So essentially, instead of kind of um, 
waiting around to draw into another metal Greymon. If you already, you know, went into it and it died, you can just on play, put it back in your hand, and you're ready for Digicross. But I really do like it for the search as well. So Greymon just overall really good effect. Uh, it's inherited as when it uh, when the Digimon is attacking. If this Digimon has blue flared its traits and your opponent has two or more Digimon in play, you can unsuspend this Digimon, so give it a second swing. So like I said, there's a lot of uh, two or more going on in this deck, so that's where Babinomon kind of fits in the theme. So we're definitely running for those because we need Greymons for our Digicross and it helps you search out your blue flares. And then additionally, speaking of Greymon, I'm running one of the red Security Greymon. So what Security Greymon does is very simply just inherited has an extra security which is just pretty bonkers so i am only running one i'm thinking about upping it to two so if you want to run two definitely do that uh this is just really helpful because uh three of the digicross requirements for metal greymon it only specifies the name metal or the name greymon so you could throw this in as your digicross uh, requirements instead of the blue one and then that way your metal greymon just has security plus one which is pretty cool so, uh, but yeah, also more Greymons is more targets. So, gotta run more than Greymons. And then we're moving on to our next Blue Flare level four, which is Male Bergermon. Uh, Male Bergermon has his on play effect as well, which is if you have Kira in play, you may return one Metal Greymon from your trash to your hand. If you don't have Kira in play, you can play a Kira from your hand without paying its call cost. Um, so Kira is the main tamer for the whole deck. Uh, so it, it kind of is what helps you get your Digicross requirements off if you don't have them in hand, since you can save them. So that's another thing. Both the the Greymon and the um, pretty much all the Blue Flare cards they all have the same ability, which is on deletion save. So you can put this into a tamer, and Kira lets you use those saved materials to re-Digicross again. So that's really helpful. Inherited is when attacking, if this Digimon has blue flare traits, your opponent has two or more Digimon, one of your opponent's Digimon cannot attack or block until the end of your opponent's turn. So that's the other gimmick for this deck is it has a lot of control. So your opponent won't be able to attack, won't be able to block. Um, so there's only once per turn though. So even if you double swing with Greymon, it's not gonna you know, activate twice. Um, but you know, it's this is still like a really really good card. It's also the other digi, digi cross requirement for Metal Greymon, so you definitely want to run for. Right, and then for our next level four, we're running four Decker Dramon. It's another blue flare with an on play. So let's just go ahead and read that real quick. On play, you draw a card. Then for each Digimon your opponent has in play, you draw an additional card. So. Uh, Example is if you're in Gaussmon and it swings and it dies and you just play this from hand for free, based on how many Digimon your opponent has, you're just drawing extra cards, which is really nice. On deletion, save, just like the rest of the blue flare cards. And then inherited is if your opponent has two or more Digimon, gets an extra 1k DP, which comes in handy. Um, but we're mostly running it for the name Decrudramon because for Decker Greymon, Decker Greymon has an extra ability added on the fact if you have Decker Dramon in its Digivolution stack, so I was going to say Inherited stash, but you know, same thing. Um, it's also another Blue Flare target, so we want to run a mostly Blue Flare centric deck, and that way we can, uh, you know, proc off our abilities. Lastly, for our level fours, we are running two copies of Kumamon. Uh, this is our hybrid, so basically it digivolves over a tamer and can attack instantly. So you may digivolve this card from your hand onto one of your blue tamers, as if the tamer is a level 3 blue Digimon, and when it digivolves, you can trash one Digivolution card from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. So we're doing this over Lobomon just because it has that extra Digivolution attack, and also if you're digivolving over your tamers, you're pretty much swinging for game anyways, so the DP doesn't really matter at that point. But we're mostly doing it because we do have card effects that state if your opponent has no Digivolution sources in one of their opponent's cards, they can't attack or block. So being able to, you know, blot this down, trash one of your opponent's Digivolution sources, and then swing for game, you know, that can help as well. So Kumamon is, uh, is pretty good. 
All right, so that was it for the level fours. Now we're getting into the, uh, the fun stuff, which is the level fives. This is the key card of the whole deck. Basically, if you don't see Metal Greymon the whole game, your deck kind of breaks, which is a little sad. So Metal Greymon is first go has material save two, which is when this Digimon is deleted, you can pick two cards in the Digivolution uh, cross in this, in this Digimon's Digi cross conditions. All right, next up, we're running four copies of Metal Greymon. This card, basically, you have to go into it if you want to win any of your games because uh, this is like the main focus of the whole deck. Uh, the first effect, Material Save 2. When this Digimon is deleted, you pick two of the Digicross sources, so Greymon and uh, Mel Bergemon, and you put them underneath one of your tamers. So that way you can reuse it with Curious Effect. On play, this Digimon gains Rush. Uh, for this turn, then if you digicross three of your opponent's Digimon with Digivolution cards less than or equal to this Digimon, cannot attack or block until the end of your opponent's next turn. So, kind of to re reiterate, you play it, it gains Rush, so it can immediately attack, and then three, three of your opponent's Digimon with two or less, because you're usually going to be getting off Greymon and Male Bergemon, um, they cannot attack or block, so this is pretty much going to also be like finishing the game just on its own. And it has Digicross minus two for each Greymon and Male Bergemon. So even though it has a cost of seven, you reduce it by up to four because it's two for Greymon, two for Male Bergemon. Even if you don't have both, you can do into one or the other just to reduce the cost by two. Um, but basically, you're playing this for three memory with, you know, Greymon and Mill Bergemon, and you really don't have to worry about getting the other two because they're going to be stacked under Kira for you, and then your opponent can't attack or block after that. <laughs> so this card is just insanely good. Um, and then going on to its evolution, so to say, we have Decker Greymon. So Decker Greymon is another level five, but you can also digivolve it onto another level five. So you can digivolve this onto Metal Greymon for two. So it has Armor Purge, which is cool. So that means that if it dies, you can, um, when this would be, when this would be deleted, uh, you can prevent the deletion by putting this card in the trash and then Metal Greymon stays on the board, which is cool. The on play effect and when Digivolu Digivolving, Digivolution, um, you can place one Digimon with blue flareness trace from your hand under, for, or from under one of your tamers into the bottom of this Digivolution card. Then, if Decker Dramon is in this Digimon's Digivolution cards, one of your opponent's Digimon cannot attack or block until the end of your opponent's turn. So, that, that this is where Decker Dramon really comes in clutch, because if you just Digivolve and you have it in your hand, you shove it into your hand, or from your hand into the Digivolution sources, and then one of your opponent's Digimon can't attack or block, and then you can just swing, not having to worry about it. And then the following turn, it's just stuck, like they can't do anything with that Digimon. It does have Digicross as well with Metal Greymon and Decker Dramon, so you can reduce it by up to four for five costs if you just wanna play it down and kinda have that ready to go. Plus if you're uh, Digicrossing, Metal Greymon's gonna be on top anyway, so when this armor purges, you'll have Metal Greymon on the board. And then if Metal Greymon um, uh, is deleted, you just material save the Decker Dramon back into your tamer. So it's a really, this is just a really fun deck. Uh, it's also really annoying because it's very stun centric where your opponent can't attack or block. Um, but you know, that's, that's, just, that's just the fun of the game, right? So uh, that's pretty much it for the Digimon in the deck. So now we're just gonna jump right into the Tamers. Starting off with our main boy, four copies of Christopher, I mean Kira. Uh, the effect, is if you have two memory or less, you can set your memory to three at the start of your turn. So it's a memory setter, which is already great. Four copies of a memory resetter. Second effect is when you would play one Digimon with Digicross requirements. By suspending this tamer, you may place cards from under your tamers as Digivolution cards for a Digicross. So you just suspend one of these and any of your tamers with Digimon under it can be used for the Digicross requirements. So that's why another reason why we're running four, because if you have multiple copies, you can just keep suspending each one 
just to keep them, you know, going. Uh, the security effect is you play this without paying memory costs, so it's just nice to security check an instant memory resetter, which is nice. Uh, and then also the deck has really good synergy with searching this out because, uh, look at that, it's a blue flare, so it's searchable. And um, Mill Bergamon can play it for free. And, you know, they, it's just key, key synergy going on with this deck. And speaking of annoying tamers, we are running three copies of Sora and Joe. So Sora and Joe is at the start of your turn, your opponent has a digi if your opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution cards in play, you can just gain two memory. So that stacks, meaning if you have two Sora and Joes, then you just gain four, <laughs> which is which is kind of funny. Uh, and then what else Sora and Joe does is uh, when your when you attack with a blue Digimon, I was gonna say when your blue Digimon attacks, but same thing. You may suspend this tamer and trash up the two Digivolution cards from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. So uh, this helps you eradicate your opponent's Digivolution stacks, which is nice. Um, and then you can easily proc off the first effect as well. Digimon would no Digivolution cards. You get two memory. Um, and then Kumamon kind of helps out with that as well. We do run options that kind of have some removal of Digivolution cards as well. Um, this is also why people play Ubamon as the Digi-Egg, just because Ubamon lets you draw if your opponent has no Digivolution cards. So there's a there's a lot of bl uh, blues thing kind of tends to be swayed towards like stun, control, and uh, removing Digivolution cards. It's like, you know, blues thing in Magic where it's like you don't get to have fun. But that's the best part. <laughs> All right, now we're moving on to our option card. So starting off with the best memory boost in the game, Blazing Memory Boost. So what Blazing Memory Boost does for five costs, I know it's a, it's a memory boost for five, but hear me out. Reveal the top six of your deck, add two with blue flare and its traits from among them to your hand. And you may play one Christopher Anuma. So also that's errated, so this is this is Christopher. Say hi, Christopher. Uh, so you can basically, you're allowed to also play Akira uh, from among them without paying its cost. So if you reveal six and you find two Blue Flare Digimon plus Akira, you can play the Akira for free and add the two Digimon to your hand. Uh, you put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order, uh, and then this stays in your battle area. The delayed effect, um, so if you wait a turn, you can just trash this and you gain two memory, kind of like all the other memory boosts. So this is just nice because you can just play this at the start of the game for five. Top six, you can find two Blue Flare and Kira, and then you're just set up for the board. You got your memory resetter set up. You probably searched out your Metal Greymon for the three memory anyways, and you just kind of start rolling from there. Uh, plus the security effect lets you play it into the battle area instantly. So kind of like all the other memory boosts, but um, this is just a really, really good searcher for the deck. All right, and then moving on to the next option, we are running three copies of Sorai. Sorai is is kind of kind of stupid funny. Like this card is is really really good. So for four memory, you can trash the top four Digivolution cards of one of your opponent's Digimon. So if your opponent has like a level five or a level six with all their Digivolution sources from when they built up their Digimon, you can just go, nah, just get rid of all of that. <laughs> uh, and then until the end of your opponent's turn, your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards can't attack. So this is anti-Rookie Rush because your opponent can't just play rookies and rush you with them. Um, and then you're combining that with the other effects that you're doing where you're removing Digivolution cards. So if you're slowly eating away at your opponent's Digivolution cards and then you play Sorai, and your opponent has a board with no Digivolution cards, those Digimon can't attack. Granted, if they do Digivolve over one of them, they can attack with it again because now it has a Digivolution card, but if they don't have anything to Digivolve, they can't just rush you down. So Sorai is really funny, especially when you get it up into security because you can just activate the main effect. So, you know, you just go, oh, main effect, trash the top four of that, and then you can just interrupt someone's play. So I really like it just because one, it costs four, which is basically nothing for what this card does. And uh, 
doing it multiple times is, is really funny, so that's why I'm running three. All right, next up, two copies of Howling Memory Boost. Howling uh, is similar to Jasor and Joe, so what it does is on play, trash up the two Digivolution cards from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon, then one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards can't attack or block until the end of your opponent's next turn. So this uh, can help you out in some late games where if your opponent has like three Digimon and you're like, I need to stun one of those, you can just play this down, stun a Digimon, kind of save yourself from being attacked once. And then also has uh, the same effect as the other memory boosts where you can gain two memory delayed. Uh, security effect, you just play them in battle area like all the other memory boosts. Um, so this is just really helpful to kind of shut your opponent out of attacks, removing some Digivolution cards. Um, but if there are other blue options you would rather play um, to kind of like like Radiant Star, if you want to run that instead, just to kind of lock your or kind of control your opponent's board and removing cards, you can do that as well. But I do like having the extra memory. So that's why I like Howling Memory Boost. And it's also just a really funny stun card to mess with people. All right, and then last but not least, as is tradition, we always run the one ice wall in our blue deck. Ice Wall is limited to one, so we run it at the one. So what it does is main effect, all of your opponent's Digimon gain when attacking, lose to memory until the end of their next turn. So this applies to all Digimon regardless when they played it. So you just play this and it's a continuous effect until the opponent's uh, next turn. So every swing they do, they lose to memory. So this can also help you uh, kind of not get killed if you're in a situation where you're like, ah, you know, every time you swing, now you lose two memory and then it kind of mitigates the number of attacks they're gonna be making. Uh, it's security effect lets you gain two memory, which is nice. So if your opponent leaves you at one and they swing and you security reveal this and you move up two, now it's your turn. So Ice Wall is a pretty funny card. It, when it comes up, it does some crazy, crazy plays. So uh, yeah. Gotta, gotta run your one ice wall. You gotta make room for it. Hi, Onyx baby. You wanna come say hi? Say hi. Come here. Look at you. So cute you are. You hear from my deck profile? Onyx wants to hang out with us, if, that, 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 if that's okay with everyone. So anyways, that was pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Onyx for jumping in on this at the end of the video, as opposed to right in the middle of it. But yeah, this deck is a lot of fun. There's new support coming out in EX4, which makes this deck crazy good. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. So that's about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.